Okay, in front of you, you see uh, this document. You should have a copy of this. It says powers of the presidency. What we're really talking about here are the formal powers of the presidency, and those fall under um, several different categories. You'll see listed there executive, legislative, foreign policy, military, and judicial. Of course, these powers are listed in Article 2 of the Constitution. If you flip over to the back side, you'll see I already have those categories, and we're going to be listing these powers of the presidency under each one. And just take note that like the president has executive power, obviously, but he also dabbles in the legislative branch and his powers also dabble a little bit in the judicial branch. And of course, he has almost exclusive um, powers in some foreign policy and military ways. So the presidency is a very unique position as a result of what the Constitution does. Um, we're going to be uh, – notice on the back side actually that I've already got some legislative powers listed in there, the veto, the pocket veto, and – the ability to sign laws, all of those are already listed in Article 1 of the Constitution, the legislative article, but I, I put them in there because those are formal powers of the presidency. Note that a veto and pocket veto, a little bit different. A pocket veto is when the president doesn't sign a bill and just ignores it, um, but Congress um, passed the bill at the end of a session and they're not in session anymore. So if Congress is not in session and they send a bill to the president and he does not sign it, um, it is considered a veto. Okay, so uh, let's start. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to need four highlighters or four colors. And uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and highlight up top here. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and choose some colors here for highlighting. And because uh, we're going to be highlighting parts of this and then on the back side going and uh, putting them in. Cool. And then we've got judicial. I'll highlight them. You should be highlighting your own too here. And we'll go with a green here. All right, great. All right. So first off, we're going to be reading um, and and highlighting as we go. So here we go. Article 1, Section uh, – Article 2, I should say, Section 1. The executive power shall be vested in the President of the United States, uh, dot, dot, dot. I mean there's a big section here about how the president is elected, um, requirements to hold office. We'll, we'll actually – have a card on requirements to hold office. And we've already talked about the Electoral College, so we don't need to, to dive into that. But just the first part here, executive power shall be vested in the president of the in, in the president. Um, that is obviously talking about executive power. So go ahead and highlight it with that. Uh, flip over to the back side and just put a bullet point and put a, all executive power in a president. Okay, go ahead and put that right now. At any time, pause if I am going too fast so you can write. So go ahead and flip over to the back side, write that in. Okay, section two, if you need to pause uh, to make sure you write the first part, that's good, otherwise I'm moving on. The president shall be commander in chief of the Na Army and Navy of the United States and of the militia of the several states when called into the actual service of the US. All right, so there's a whole section here. And really what we're gonna focus on is commander in chief. All right, so let's just highlight that. That obviously falls under military. So grab your color for foreign policy military. Mine's like a light blue. All right. And we got commander in chief. And this whole section really here um, is, is really what we're talking about. Um, that That's this part. But on the back side, you can flip over and just put commander in chief. If you want to add army and navy, you're certainly welcome to. All right. Let's continue. Um, he may require in writing the opinion. Uh, I'm sorry. He may require the opinion in writing of the principal officers in each executive department. All right, so highlight that. That's gonna be an executive power. And so I used yellow. That's an executive power. So on the back side, back side I'm sorry, um, go ahead and write in that he may require in writing opinions of executive department or executive officers. Let's put executive officers. Require in writing opinion of executive officers. What does that mean? That means that the president wanted to, uh, let's say the president was worried about going to war with a country. Then he could in, um, say, hey, Secretary of Defense or in history, Secretary of War, you give me a plan if we had to go to war with, with another country. So, uh, or Secretary of Health and Human Services, I want a plan for healthcare. Like well, what can we do to make healthcare cheaper? And so the president can require that. That's actually a power in the Constitution, and they must comply. So um, in writing of executive officers. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Upon any subject relating to the duties of the respective offices. So that is all part of that, okay? Upon any subject relating to the duties of their respective officers. Okay, we're continuing. And he shall have the power to grant reprieves, 
and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in the cases of impeachment. So grant reprieves and pardons. That is a judicial power because it has to do with the courts. Um, all right, so let me go find my green color. Here we go. You highlight with your color. Great. Uh, flip over to the back side. Judicial put grants and reprieves. We'll make a card on this, but just to talk about this, a reprieve is basically like shortening a, a prisoner's sentence or um, putting like a stay on their execution. So like they're going to be executed, but you give them like a reprieve and now they're just going to get life in, in, in the prison. Uh, or again, you can let's release them from prison. But they, the, their punishment still stands. Like the conviction is still real. That's a reprieve. A pardon is when the president just literally pardons you. Like it's like a forgiveness. It's like, guess what? You know what? We're going to pretend like this crime never happened. And you literally get it wiped clean. Like it's like it never happened from your record. So reprieve and pardon. So that's a judicial power. So the court has decided you're going to go to prison and the president decides, mm, no, no, you're not. So it's in, by the way, there is no check on this power. The legislature, the executive and the judicial branch can do nothing. It is an absolute power. The president has absolute power of reprieve and pardon. It is, is incredible power, actually. Um, all right, cool. Uh, except in case of impeachment. So if, if, a, if a judge has been impeached or a president has been impeached, then you can't grant a reprieve or pardon. All right, so there's no, there's nothing there. This is why uh, J uh, Nixon resigned before he was impeached, because then Vice President Ford could give him a pardon for um, breaking the law, which was at back then trying to cover up a crime. All right, let's continue. Uh, section two, he shall have the power by the advice and consent of the Senate to make treaties provided two thirds of the Senate's present concur. All right, so make treaties. So that's gonna be, let's see, make treaties. That's a foreign power. So I'm going to need, um, what color is my foreign power? It's blue. So I'm going to go ahead and give my blue. All right, good. And you go ahead and use your color. And then on the back side, go ahead and put make treaties and put, and put in parentheses um, two-thirds Senate. Okay, so make treaties under foreign powers, um, two-thirds Senate. And by the way, that's a pretty much a plenary power. Plenary meaning like absolute. He can make treaties and like the Senate and the Congress cannot say jack squat about it. All they can do is up or down vote. That's it. I mean, the Senate, the Senate can only give an up or down vote. There's no, House has no role whatsoever in, in, in this case. All right, next, he shall nominate and by, with the advice and consent of the Senate, shall appoint ambassadors and other public ministers and consuls. All right, so right here, ambassadors, um, ministers, and consuls, those people are uh, foreign affairs. So they go out and like, we have an ambassador of Canada, an ambassador of Britain. So these people represent the US to um, the uh, foreign nations. So that's gonna be a foreign power. So go ahead and grab that. All right, good, foreign. All right, and um, it says with advising consent of the Senate. So that means like basically 50% of this, 50 plus one, percent of the Senate has to approve of these people. So go ahead and put that under foreign affairs, appoint ambassadors, put 50 plus one Senate. All right, good. Um, also, he with advice and consent, that, that uh, clause back up here still applies, judges of the Supreme Court and all other officers. Okay, so judges of the Supreme Court, that is going to be a judiciary power. So I'll get my green, you get your color. Go ahead and write on the back, judges of the Supreme Court, and all other officers of the United States whose appointments not herein otherwise provided for, which shall be established by law. Um, officers, this is executive officers, okay? All other officers, any executives um, in the government. So that's going to be an executive power, which for me is yellow. All right, awesome. And so go ahead and put that under on the backside, executive officers whose appointments are not here and otherwise provided for, meaning like Homeland Security was created after September 11th, like it's not provided for, but it's established by law. See right here, this clause, which shall be established by law. So Congress creates a law, says we're going to have Homeland Security, president gets to appoint that person um, with advice and consent of the Senate. And advice and consent of the Senate simply means 50% plus one. <clears throat> but the Congress may... Uh, made by law, vest the appointments of such inferior office, officers as they think proper in the president alone, in the courts of law, or the heads of departments. So basically, like Congress can give the president the power 
of inferior officers. And that means like they're not ahead. See how it says inferior? That means they're they're not like the Supreme Court. They're in a court below it. They're not the head of Homeland Security. They're like the assistant secretary. So president and, and by the way, Congress does vest the president in all those. So um go ahead and put um under a, uh inferior officers, that's going to be an executive power. Inferior officers is an executive power and uh courts of law that means like lower courts so like other federal courts so under uh oops i'm sorry i, ca I call out the wrong color go back and do that again uh go ahead and put inferior officers uh under executive powers and then under judiciary go ahead and put other federal judges um we're going to talk much more about the judiciary coming up but just know that all right cool President shall have the power to fill all vacancies that happen during the recess of the Senate. So if the Senate's not there, the president can fill a vacancy. Granting commissions which shall expire at the end of the next session. So basically like the Senate is out, president can fill a vacancy, um, but it, it expires as soon as the Senate gets back into power. At the By the end of the next session, he has to have appointed someone or sent someone up to them to, um, to approve. So power to fill all vacancies, that's going to be the executive power. So put that under the executive, executive branch, all right? So he can fill vacancies if Senate's not in session. All right, cool. Section three, he shall from time to time give to Congress information on uh, of the State of the Union. All right, that's huge. Let's see what it says. And recommend for their consideration such measures as he shall judge necessary and expedient. Okay, so information of the State of the Union. State of the Union, that's a legislative priority because it's going to go to Congress. All right, so what's my legislative code? I've already forgotten. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't done any legislative power. So here we go. That is a uh, my little purple pink color. So you go grab your color. All right, and recommend for their consideration such measures as he shall deem necessary and expedient. All right, go ahead and highlight that. That's legislative too. What does he mean? What do we mean by consideration? Such measures as he shall, he shall, shall judge necessary and expedient. That means like he gets to suggest legislation. That's what it is. He can suggest legislation. So on the back side, you're going to legislative powers and you're going to put one state of the union address. Okay. That's what that is. State of the union address. And then second, um, suggest suggest legislation suggest legislation boom so very powerful section there he may on extreme extraordinary occasions convene both houses so um so he can call both houses into a special session all right a special session so put that under um legislative power convene both houses that means to call them uh, of either of them in the case of disagreement between them with respect to the time of adjournment, he may adjourn them. So he can also adjourn um, the houses, meaning basically he can send them home. So he can say to the houses, hey, look, we're not meeting right now. You guys are not here, but we're going to get together and we're going to work on this issue, whatever it is. Or he may at, during that say, okay, they're disagreeing. I can't de deal with them. I'm going to send them all home. Go, go home. Okay. This is, by the way, during not during Congress's regular session. If Congress is in regular session, which, you know, federal Congress is pretty much always in regular session, but um, if they're not in regular session, then he can call them and adjourn them. But if they're in regular session, he cannot adjourn Congress. He cannot just send them home when they're in regular session. Um, and he shall receive ambassadors and other public ministers. Okay, what's that talking about? Receiving them. Receiving ambassadors? That means from another country. From another country. That's a foreign affair power. So under foreign affairs, go ahead and put receive ambassadors and other public ministers. So he can, you know, receive the prime minister of Australia or the prime minister of Britain or France. Okay. And he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. That's huge right there. Faithfully executed laws. So faithfully execute the laws. Go ahead and put that under executive power. So he has to make sure the laws are enforced and shall commission all officers of the United States. And that just means military, um, commissioning officers. That is a military power, which is my belief. Okay, good. Awesome. Fill those in. Um, section four, you don't have to put under anything, but just be aware of. 
pretty relevant uh, given recent events. The president, vice president, and all civil officers of the United States, meaning heads of department, shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. And of course, we know that that requires two thirds of the Senate for conviction. All right, awesome. Uh, so that finishes that. I want you to study this. And then there is a sort. Um, there may be some other practices well you need to do, but the sort you absolutely must do on this so you understand the powers of the presidency and how they overlap and check other branches. Thank you.